Hi guys, thank you for joining me for another video today. This one is a, sp a speed painting, speed inking um, video of a hummingbird. I knew that I wanted that specific pose and so uh, the reference piece I used was just off Google images. I typed in hummingbird scratching I think and that was the first one that came up. Um, so full credit uh, for the reference goes to the photographer. I tend to use such references when I'm doing practice pieces, which is what I consider this to be. Uh, I decided um, that I wanted to ink the piece first before putting any paint down. Um, it's been a while since I did any inking work and sometimes when I I'm feeling like I want to create but at the same time I don't know what I want to create or I'm not in the mood to really focus completely on what I'm doing I tend to do a quick ink piece and then um, put in some water paint washes on top I find that to be sort of the easiest and least stressful way of creating something Now, you'll notice that I'm using a dip pen. Um, that usually depends on how fine a nib I need, firstly. And secondly, it depends also on the ink that I'm utilizing. So in this case, I'm using a semi-waterproof ink. Uh, I found out the hard way that depending on the pen that you use, the ink could either be completely waterproof or not. That's just because the thicker the nib is, the more ink you're putting down and the least likely it is to dry completely. And I find that with these sort of semi water resistant paint, uh, inks, it's best to use a really fine tip such as a dip pen. Uh, usually after utilizing such a pen, I can actually put down some water paint uh, washes quite soon after without having any issues.
so you'll notice that I'm putting quite a bit of detail in the piece. Uh, that's really something that I generally do a lot. I love really detailed works and the detail will come in regardless of whether I put it in at the beginning or during the colouring phase. So I find that the more detail you put in when you're inking, the less you need to worry about uh, detailing when you actually paint. Now as for why I sometimes ink before painting, you know sometimes you just feel like creating something but at the same time you're not really in the mood of um, working on one of your say final pieces. You just want to put something together in your sketchbook uh, or a scrap piece of paper which is what I'm doing here and you don't really know what you want to do or you don't really want to worry about putting in you know a lot of thought and effort into the painting process in such cases i prefer to ink first uh, that way i end up with something not unlike say a coloring book where i don't really need to be so switched on when i'm putting the paint layers together i find that the inking stage because i already have a pencil outline beneath it is quite easy it's not very tricky and so once I do that the painting phase is even simpler uh, watercolor is inherently quite difficult to control I find that if you want to use it just for say a quick um, urban say landscape painting or if you just want to do some quick plein air it's perfectly fine uh, but if you want to do a really detailed piece then you have to be quite patient and it's pretty easy to make mistakes I feel especially on hot press paper where lifting the paint is not as easy now with regards to my paint selection I knew that I was going to use Sennelier because I wanted to layer my colors and Sennelier is pretty good for uh, glazing uh, I also have this tin sitting around and every now and then I want to change things up and utilize different brands of paint so I'm constantly learning more about their various characteristics. I think it's really important that you know your materials, know your ink, know your paint. Um, I think I spoke about this previously but I used to make mistakes by utilizing um, say various pigments for the wrong purpose so in one memorable occasion i utilized a very granulating daniel smith color on an almost completed highly detailed bird painting and i almost ruined it um, and that sort of that that fear sort of lives with me now and so i'm always paying really close attention to what pigment and what brand i'm using before i use it It's good that um, in this case I'm using quite a limited palette. You'll notice that I just put in some of the colors in a porcelain palette mixer, just what I was going to use at that stage. Uh, later on in the video you'll see me add more colors that I was missing at that point. I believe it's incredibly important that you know how to mix your colors. Um, I personally have a quite a large selection of paint, probably more than anybody else, anybody actually needs. And I don't collect them for that purpose. I collect them because I'm a scientist. Um, that's basically my, my job. And I love knowing what's in my paint. I love the chemistry behind uh, pigment making and, and paint creation and that's why I collect uh, quite a bit of um, you know various hues by different makers to learn their characteristics unless you're sort of interested in that or you know you're incredibly curious you don't need more than a good mixing palette and this 12 tube uh, collection is a decent mixing palette I think it's quite important that you put in the time learning how to mix all your colors from a limited palette. My very first palette was given to me by a friend. It was um, like a half-used Winsor & Newton Cotman set. 
so it was student quality but i didn't know it at the time i was just really pleased to have had you know this thing that was given to me and so i worked really hard on trying to get the colors that i needed from it and then slowly as i became better i learned the limitations of the materials that i was using and then i started studying up on them and then slowly collected more and i think this was probably about a decade and a half ago so it's been a while um, usually you don't just end up with a fully fledged collection you just collect things over time I want to apologize in advance I know that my head keeps getting in the way and this will sort of get worse towards the end of the video I'm really sorry I didn't realize that the camera was directly above my head uh, and I get really engrossed in what I'm doing to the point where I forget that you know I have a camera above me and that I'm doing this for you know a purpose I'm doing this to show you my process so I'm really sorry about that I will make it up to you by creating more of these videos um, I already have a tutorial that's half done that will be posted soon and um, I think it's quite important that perhaps I take you on the journey with me and allow you to also um, come along and actually do some of the work yourself. So I'm planning on putting together a step-by-step -step how to draw a bird video and then after that I'll probably follow it up with a how to paint the bird video. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. And as always, if you have um, any requests or you basically have any advice for us with regards to the videos, do let us know. Both Myra and I are quite new to this, um, but we, we don't want it to just be a channel where I paint. I really do want to help you with your own um, journey as well. So you'll see the piece slowly coming together. You'll notice that having that ink reference really helps give the piece life and direction. Uh, I don't have to really stress about where the paint is going. I already know, you know, which feather is supposed to be green and which is supposed to be brown because I've drawn them in already. And then I could just go in afterwards and then slowly layer my colors and of course I knew in this case that I was going to slowly uh, layer my colors which is why I specifically chose the Sennelier brand um, if I wanted to create something that was a bit more impactful really quickly maybe perhaps something a bit more abstract I may have chosen maybe a Daniel Smith so you know it's really important that you know what brands you have uh, what their strengths and weaknesses are so that you make life easier for yourself and I think it's also quite important that in instances such as these where you feel like creating but you don't really know what you want to create it's it's really important that you do something rather than just not do anything at all which sometimes i find myself doing that and then i have to kick myself and then you know just do a quick sketch um, just use a reference any reference personally i keep a folder full of reference photos anything that interests me and that tends to be just for me that tends to be uh, things that I want to paint in my sketchbook when I am basically in that mood where I'm in a creating mood but at the same time I'm not really in the mood to work on something detailed and um, you know high risk something that I've been working on for weeks and weeks and I'm feeling a bit too impatient I, I've ruined pieces that way before where I just took them out did what I wanted got really impatient and then ruined them so now I basically put time in creating these little sketches just to keep myself um, feeling good about what I'm doing, practicing, but then not ruining any of my pieces. So thank you very much for watching the video. If you have any questions, um, if you have any advice, let us know in the comments below. I'm fully aware that my head was in the way and I will definitely make sure that doesn't happen again for future videos. Um, you know uh, I feel that sometimes it's just good to see how other people do it you know what their processes are how do they spend their sort of day-to-day -day, uh, creating but perhaps things that they don't show um, I have many sketchbooks 
many scraps of paper with little drawings on them that no one ever gets to see. And so I think sometimes it could be intimidating when you look at an artist's portfolio and you're just taken aback by the amazing work that they have, but you don't see the hundreds or thousands of sketches or practice pieces, ruined pieces, pieces that go in the bin that basically span that time period. And I just think it's important that I show you that. So anyway, thanks again for watching the video and we'll see you in the next one.